you will never get the end of what AI can do for you. It can do everything. It can do things you can't dream of, and then it can do more. Tomorrow, there will be things that you never would have thought. Hello, it's David Jennings, and I've got a really special presentation for you today. It's the ultimate guide to chat GPT for online coaches. And I'm joined by Amy Yamada and also Ken Dro. My name is David Jennings. I'm the author of Systemology. And just a little bit of backstory, and then I'll get Amy and Ken to introduce themselves and talk a little bit more about what they do. But I came across their work. One of our systemologists uh, spotted their original ultimate guide to chat GPT for online coaches, and it got shared in our community and everybody was just like all eyes on it. It came out just as chat GPT was really breaking in a lot of discussion around AI and it was perfectly timed. So much so that I reached out to the both of them and said, look, I'd love for you to do a private workshop for our systemologists, which they were more than happy to do. And uh, we ended up even doing a, a full half day breakout session for them as well for some systemologists that wanted to go really deep. Now, I've kept in contact with them, just they are on the cutting edge of what's breaking in the AI world. Here at Systemology, we've made some big adjustments to be almost like an AI first company. Probably one of the biggest insights and learnings that I've had as we've been going is uh, the importance of focusing in on what you're already doing and allowing AI to speed up the effectiveness and the, the quality of output that you get from what you're already doing rather than finding just, oh, AI can create these fancy graphics that I was never using before, but now that I can get the AI to do it and I can get it done so cheaply, I might as well start doing it, um, which is where I think a lot of people are getting stuck a bit a deer in the headlights because there's this overwhelm of all of the potential possibilities. Whereas I always come back to, well, what are you currently doing as a coach or consultant and how can we use the tool to speed it up? And I think that's what the uh, the guide that Ken and Amy put together uh, did so well because it, it covered off a whole range of prompts and things that coaches should be looking at. And, and that's what we're going to dive in today. We're going to look at customizing your bio identifying and creating customer avatars. We'll look at how you can leverage ChatGPT for content marketing and also developing process and how you can use it to really scale your operations. Because I feel like there's a, a sweet spot at the moment with virtual assistants, AI and process when you kind of lay the three over the top of each other. It just creates a tremendous opportunity. Maybe just to start, I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about you guys, what you're working on, the types of clients that you've got and, and what you're seeing in the, this uh, landscape. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, yeah, it's, it's been such an exciting time, I think, in this industry of really leveraging AI, like you said, for what you're already working on, but leveraging it to save time, energy, money even, and also discover how to bring this piece around authenticity so that you can create you know, marketing, content, copywriting, um, systems. I mean, there's there's so much. It's pretty endless. And so when when Ken and I really got into it uh, late 2022, we really saw something that we knew was going to be a game changer, not only in our industry but in the world. And so it's just been really really fun working primarily with coaches and service based entrepreneurs online with the authenticity piece that we are so passionate about of of really bringing in how to train. ChatGPT and other platforms on your authentic voice so it can sound like you when you're creating content, um, as well as developing systems and frameworks that can really save you, like I said, so much time and energy. So it's been fun. We really think about this um, authenticity piece as being the bridge between humanity and technology right now. Um, it's so exciting to see what the technology can do. Um, and a lot of people are rushing in to to capitalize on the efficiency and all the things that they can do. And in that we can lose our voice and they'll produce something really quickly and go, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe it did it, but it doesn't sound like me. So that's what we've been focusing on is how can we create stuff? Not only fast, but how can we make it good? How can we make it sound like us? How can we see ourselves in something that this tool is creating? And that's been, our journey with AI. Maybe we'll get into some of the application. I've got a, a resource document that we'll share that'll go along with this video. And we'll also link to the original document um, that you had and all the prompts. 
Uh, I know some of the first prompts we were going to look at um, included improving your profile. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So this is uh, in the original guide here, and it's uh, where it says bio generator. And this is where you can go into ChatGPT. We early on nicknamed it ChatGPT. Go into ChatGPT and give it this prompt that instructs ChatGPT that it is an interviewer. Interview me one question at a time, like an interviewer would. Ask me about my business until you have enough information to write my bio as a Forbes profile. Yeah, and this was really fascinating when we learned that ChatGPT can interview you, right? That it, you don't just have to ask it to write your bio, but you can actually have it uh, prompt you with with information about what it is that you would want in your about profile, as though it's an interviewer. Um, we think often about how we prompt ChatGPT, but to flip it around and say, how can it prompt us is really interesting. Exactly. And we have we had a little bit of fun with this too. If you want to have your, your profile, your bio written in a certain voice, so you can always give it a follow-up prompt once it has that that bio to channel the spirit of one of one of these or something along these lines. So you can just have fun with it. Another one and, and probably one of the things that you're really well known for is this uh, prompt around uh, finding your uh, authentic voice and and doing analysis and then using that to feed back into AI to make sure it sounds like you as the individual. Yeah, it's it's been a pretty incredible. This is this is probably my favorite <laughs> prompt that we we've used and we've trained um, hundreds of entrepreneurs at this point on this, which is to to tell ChatGPT to summarize your unique writing style. So something we've had fun with as we've uh, trained on these workshops is to ask the audience, if someone were to describe, like if you were to describe your writing style, how would you describe it? And they might say something like, oh, conversational or informal or super direct or whatever it is. But then if I would say, well, what about your content patterns? What about your vocabulary, your grammar? And they're like, uh, <laughs> how do I respond to this? And so one thing that Ken and I often talk about is to not just use AI or ChatGPT as something that you delegate to as if it were another human, but to know that it has this intelligence that we ourselves don't have. So to go beyond the human limitation and to speak into, can you analyze my writing style and break it down into these se seven different elements? And it's incredible how you can give it this prompt, telling it to summarize your writing style in a very specific way, which we're gonna share. And then underneath that prompt, insert one of your own unique writing style samples so whether it's an email that you've written, a blog, um, a part of a book, maybe a few paragraphs from a book, a uh, social media post, and then have it respond with breaking down a, a summary of your unique voice and writing style. Yeah, this was really exciting when we found this out because I interviewed ChatGPT for a while to say, how, how do you find out what somebody's voice is? What are the actual elements that you would use in order to perfectly mimic somebody's voice so that it's undistinguishable, um, so that it's indistinguishable from something they've actually written. It's like, well, I look at their tone, their grammar, their vocabulary, their rhetorical devices, their content patterns. Content patterns. Yeah. Um, and then they have a, there's a few different ways yeah. that it looks at um, your point of view, your values, your beliefs, your mission. We don't need to use all of those, but we do put values in there so that it's not only speaking in the the way that you would speak but it's also it, it has some information about how you think so that when it's getting information if those the uh the references that it will make will be a reflection of your values so we've come up with a prompt that will ask for these specific items i i like to think about like a, when you take a paint chip from a wall and you want it to match that paint perfectly there are different elements that certain amount of red and blue and white, you know, all, all the colors that they use to mix together the recipe for that exact color. And we can ask ChatGPT to come up with these specific elements for you so that it will find your voice. Perfect. I've got, um, I'll share, this is the resource. I know we'll include a link through to this. Um, and this is the prompt that you've got just here. So, um, yeah. I'll copy that and I'll just jump over into chat GPT and I'm going to also, you've got here in add your writing sample. Now I'm just going to grab a little snippet from my book systemology. Take, yeah, here we go. Is this book right for you? Let's just take a little bit of that. 
and then we'll just paste that straight in and then we'll let chat GPT do its thing. You're getting more than what we normally get. Oh, pacing too. Look at that. This Pretty is cool. amazing. Um, I haven't seen pacing. It's really mm -hmm. cool. So, so essentially if you use that exact, uh, prompts that we've given you, given you, so for anyone watching, you can use that prompt and then put in a writing sample, just like David did. And, yeah. um, and even if it's just a couple of paragraphs from a, an email that you've written again, just wanting to find something that's in your voice. So David, we just want to ask you when you, mm. at first glance, as you read through this writing style analysis, do you feel like it sounds like you? Does it sound uh, like it describes your style? Yeah, I think uh, some bits that stand out for me, like the straightforward, clear language, no unnecessary jargon. And I like I've done this exercise uh, in the past using your prompt, and then I I take this, and now it becomes part of any initial prompting that I do when I'm asking it to then write something. Hey, I want you to write an email or I want you to write a social media post and I will feed this into it and say, in this particular style. Yeah, what's exciting is that output is actually an input, right? We're getting that not because that's something that your readers need to see, but that's now a tool that you can use every time that, you, that you're using ChatGPT for any kind of copy you're writing. You can say, write in the voice of and put that in brackets and it will be like, oh, I understand this voice very specifically. And it's so much more specific than when you say uh, conversational, right? Conversational, the, its idea of that would be like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while, right? And it will, it will do this, <laughs> it, it gets too friendly sometimes. And you're like, I thought you wanted it to sound like you're having a conversation. Like, well, a little bit, but you know, like I'm also straightforward in all these other things you said, right? Like. So when you have that level of detail, it can understand really well. And we like using this more uh, detailed prompt for you to personally read it and say, yes, that sounds like me, I agree. And then we can shrink it down a little bit and, and um, have it create a prompt that you'll use by asking it to say those in 10 words or less and, and make it something that's really concise to not eat into the number of tokens it can read because ChatGPT has a limited memory. So we kind of like this to be tighter. Um, so we can refine that a little bit more. And then we'll use that every time you write copy to say, and write in the voice of this. And it will remember that for whatever you whatever you want it to create for you. Mm -hmm. Also, one, one question that we often get when we take uh, audiences through this particular exercise is they will ask, so where do I put this? Does ChatGPT save this? Or do I need to save this? Um, now, it, it will be in the conversation, the chat that you're in. However, what we recommend is that once you have that that uh, condensed version of that analysis, that summary from ChatGPT, to copy and paste that into another document to save and have it just easily accessible so you can feed it back into a new conversation at any given time to use that to have ChatGPT write in your voice. Um Following that, and I got that tip from you guys, I've uh, created, this is just an example of my own, uh, I just call it a, a priming document, and I've got a range of things like, here's my bio, here's my target audience, here's my uh, writing style. So mm -hmm. I just have all of this saved and ready to go. I've even taken some of our products and uh, got product summaries that come off the back of these. But this is basically a little cheat sheet that I can then use as I'm starting new chats with ChatGPT and I can quickly train it uh, on what I need. I love this. And what you're doing is so great, especially as we talked to earlier, that there are these advancements that have happened over the last few months. And one thing that's come out in the last couple of months is the ability to upload files. Um, ChatGPT actually followed another model that we that we like to use, Claude, um, in allowing you to upload files that it can access. So when you have a voice prompt and a product and some of these different elements you have, you can upload those as specific text files so that you just have those in a folder and you say, here's my voice, here's my ideal client, here's what here's how I like to write emails, and here's my product, and say, 
okay, look at the things I've uploaded. I want to write an email to my target audience in my voice about my product and be like, I already know all that stuff because you just uploaded it to me, right? <laughs> it's so great. So it's really neat that you've already got those outputs saved separately so that you can use those now as your inputs for everything you create. Yeah, perfect. Um, one of those inputs, and you saw it on the screen that I just showed there, was this idea around uh, the avatar. Um, and you guys have some prompting for creating the avatar that I think is is really sharp. Um, it's Again, it's, it's on the document that we'll share um, with this. Um, but I don't know if you want to speak a little bit to how you guys are using AI to, to craft avatars. Uh, you can certainly use what, what, what David just shared in terms of having ChatGPT interview you. So the prompt is uh, saying, once again, you're an interviewer, interview me one question at a time, like an interviewer would. Ask me questions about my business until you have enough information to summarize my ideal client in detail, far beyond what I have shared in my answers. So this, this is, a, I would say, a version 1.0 that still works really well. And in, in training ChatGPT to ask you questions to pull out really what is it that you want to say, and then it can come up with what like who your ideal client is. Um, and uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about this one because of how far we've taken it from here. I know we're like, how much time do you have? I know. Do a I'll, whole intensive one right now. Well, I'll tell you yeah. this: it, once it gives you a basic, uh, pers like a basic profile of your ideal client, it might blow your mind, but then you can ask it for 10 fears, 10 frustrations, 10 limiting beliefs, 10 aspirations, 10 goals. And you can get all those. You can say, how would I address those? What's the best way for me to address those, right? You can start to dig into those deeper mm -hmm. emotional pain points that they have and be like, oh, I've heard people say this before. Like, what could I put in my program that would help solve this problem for my ideal client. You can really start to leverage that ideal client to take it to levels that you didn't even, often there's things you know about your ideal client, but you don't even think of that as being something that you would need to identify. And there's a whole wealth of information that you can cascade from that. So that's what we've been working on. That's really exciting for us. So yes, I've taken uh, the work that you've been doing with the avatars and I used it as inspiration for me, I'll include this uh, prompt that I'm going to uh, uh, put in on this sheet. But basically, I thought uh, rather than have it interview me, I have already interviewed a range of our ideal clients, and I end up posting them on YouTube. There's this lady just here who runs a music academy, and uh, she's perfect because she's gone through a lot of our programs, been really happy, and it's really transformed her business. So I started off transcribing the interview with her which I've got sitting in here and I'm just going to use another AI tool called Claude sometimes I'll jump between the two with chat GPT and Claude sometimes Claude can handle larger amounts of data and I'm just going to go grab this little note just here and I'm going to post this directly Claude and basically I'm telling it that I've got an interview transcript and I would like it to review it and make a client avatar from it. And I've said, when you're not quite sure with a particular area, then go ahead and just make some educated guesses. So it's gone through now and it'll give us demographics, background, goals. And this, uh, we'll just let it uh, chip away here, but you can already see it's starting to address some of those things that Ken was talking about around the frustrations and you can ask it things like, um, you know, what are the top 10 fears for my target client? Just basically as Ken just mentioned. And then you can use this obviously to then create content and find hooks for your social media and all those sorts of things. Um, so you can see here, losing control of the business by bringing in systems. Uh, systems will take away the creativity or the passion and then we can get it to flip and then also ask it and go, great, well, how would you address this particular fear? And then creating content that addresses that fear kind of really demonstrates a deep understanding of your target audience. Another one that you've got here is around the reviewing copy. Um, 
and, and you've got some different questions on this, but I'd love, yeah, some insight on this one. Okay. Okay. So this one, uh, what's, this is what I'm so blown away by AI is that you can have it write copy for you and then you can still have it review its own copy, give itself feedback. And so with these questions, you can ask it questions like, what, what would a skeptical potential client say about this email? Right. Or why would they be skeptical about these things or create a list of 20 objections that a customer might, might have based on the offer in this copy. So you're having ChatGPT actually give itself feedback as a copywriter, for example. And by doing that, then you can have the copy improved based on what you're hearing from it. And then you can flip it back and give it that feedback to change and update the copy. One thing I've learned when we ask ChatGPT to act as an editor is that ChatGPT um, and all of the LLM models that I've seen so far are trained to make you happy. So if you say, how does this look? I'd be like, it looks great. Everything you've done is amazing. And they're going to want to buy this. This is so good. Oh, I'm so glad you shared it with me. And it's like, no, I actually want some honest feedback. So if you're asking it to be an editor for you, then like, let it know, like, you're not going to hurt my feelings. You can actually say that, right? I want you to think critically. I want you to give me honest feedback so that I can improve this. How, would, how can I make this more engaging? How can I make this more interesting? How can I improve this copy to connect better with my ideal client, which you've already shared with them? And it will give you some hard truth. Sometimes it'll score it on a scale of one to 10, like, like engaging. I give it a six out of 10 and here's why. Right. And, and it will, it will break down what is, what needs to be improved and give you some pointers about it. So you can ask it for that honest feedback and say, great, go ahead and do it. Right. Like now that now that you know why what you created wasn't good enough, fix it and be like, OK, I'll do that for you. You know, and so you can get it to start working recursively to keep going until it scores itself eight out of ten, nine out of ten and see if that if that fits better for you. Yeah, I love that. Um, the, the key really comes down to thinking about what are you currently doing every day as a coach or consultant? What are those recurring activities? Are you creating that content? And then just having it in your brain where it becomes a habit where you go, oh, great. Can I run that through chat GPT? Can I ask it for some feedback? Uh, and using it as like that, almost like a critical second brain where that way you can kind of get that outside eye. And then it also shortens the the time it takes to get really quality output. Um, I'll... I'd love to show an example that I've got here. Um, and this is around using uh, ChatGPT to create content, because I know that's the thing that a lot of coaches and consultants do. And uh, this is a particular method that we've created. I'll just walk through high level. And I'm sure when I provide the prompts, everybody else will, will be able to follow along and, and try it on their own. But we basically have this doc where we're creating content for our YouTube channel. and this is just the document that we use behind the scene. So here's the link to the raw video itself. This happens to be an interview I did with um, the former COO of 1-800-GOT-JUNK, Cameron Herald. And this is a link through to the interview I had with him. I always start off these documents by getting that piece of uh, content transcribed because that's obviously the way that we then feed it into uh, chat GPT. Now I touched on and showed briefly Claude earlier and I, I use Claude sometimes because it can handle larger inputs uh, but you can also feed large inputs into chat GPT. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just paste this transcript into here. This is a thing called a uh, chat GPT splitter and I'll just let it process here. It breaks this long interview up into chunks and then all I have to do is copy it over. So I've got my chat GPT here, and I'm just gonna start off by copying these over here. There's six chunks that it, this particular uh, website here, and you can see it at chatgptsplitter.com, will load the prompts in there to let it know to act as a document loader and don't respond when I'm posting in this content until we're all the way done. So I'll just load this in so you can see it's just a matter of cut and paste, but it's a great way to get ChatGPT working with 
much larger inputs. So I'll just do that and we'll paste that in here. So now it's all done. It's got all of its um, pieces. Then using the prompts that I've got in the document here for you, and we basically, I jump between the prompts and this document here. I actually have an assistant go through and we use ChatGPT to analyze that transcript to help us identify keywords and titles for the YouTube uh, videos that get posted and the descriptions and the social media posts. And it's literally just a series of prompts that we cut. And then we just cut and paste it into this document here. And then we have an editor go over it and give it a little bit of a once over before it's posted out. But we use this to post our YouTube videos and all of the associated social media content that's used to then promote that YouTube video and posting into our communities and things like that. But you can see how a, a sequence when stitched together um, can be really, really effective. But are there any other techniques that you're seeing for coaches and consultants? Obviously, content creation is a big one for a lot of coaches and consultants. And a lot of what we talked about earlier was almost making sure that any content that we're putting into AI matches your voice and getting a deeper understanding of our target audience. That really sets up a foundation. And in the guide, you reference using it for writing emails and things like that. Are there any other really interesting use cases you've seen for coaches and consultants? When this first came out, there were a lot of copywriters. We had somebody actually say like, please stop, you're killing me. And it's like, we're killing you? Like, you're the person who has the most to gain here. Like, yeah. suddenly, if you embrace this tool and you take that to your clients and go, listen, I can now generate 50 social media posts a week. You can do that. They don't need it. It's more than they need. But you can scale your offering with this as a copywriter. And all they can do is come up with crummy stuff because they haven't learned how to use the tool as well as you have. Like if you embrace it, there's so much more that you can do with it. And I think there's a mental shift of, of accepting this new tool that it's like when the internet came out or cell phones came out, like you can kind of pretend like that's not happening, but at some point you're going to have to catch up. And we're in this really cool window where we can we can be on the front of it and not have to deal with that lag but we're going to have to learn the same things later anyway but not out of desperation right now we can learn ai ai out of the sense of opportunity and i think that's really exciting yes yeah it's definitely not going anywhere and you either have two options you either embrace it or you don't, and your competition, there's going to be a truckload of people that do embrace it. It's not going anywhere. And the longer that you leave it, the further behind you'll get. And like you said, there's this window of opportunity. I think about what we did with our content machine, and I just kind of gave a little bit of a snippet uh, a moment ago about that. Um, I taught this to a guy called Den Lenny, and he's a, a videographer uh, coach. He, he helps videographers uh, build scalable video production studios. And uh, when he started off, th this is the exact process he went through. He recorded a bunch of little videos of him doing a whole range of different things in his business. He then hired a virtual assistant based out of the Philippines, trained them up on how to use AI and some of the prompts that we talked about, fed those videos in and created step-by-step -step processes, systemized a huge part of his business. and uh, he then even started identifying some of the systems that his clients needed as well. So he started off systemizing his own business, but then found a range of systems and processes that would work well for his clients' businesses and started to document, you know, best practice for lead generation and sales and setting up projects for video production businesses. And he ended up getting the virtual assistant to document his entire podcasting process where they were doing the outreach, they were making the show notes and posting it. And that's how Den was getting many of his clients through the door was by posting on LinkedIn and, and sharing his podcast. Uh, and he found 
he could now get much of that podcast done without him, which was chewing up a huge amount of his time, which meant that he could then focus more on uh, delivering uh, for his existing clients and also uh, around the sales. But it's small little tweaks like that when you combine the AI, virtual assistance and process that kind of really uh, enabled him to kind of grow significantly. Over 12 months, he ended up seeing an uplift in his revenue by 85%. And I only mention that really just kind of as a little bit of inspiration. I, I mentioned to Den uh, that uh, I wanted to do a little presentation around him and he sent me some photos uh, saying about how much he'd noticed his life change. But I, I feel like there is a unique opportunity right now for coaches and consultants to combine a lot of what we've covered today. And there's a real path for growing and scaling uh, their coaching business. It's been really exciting to see um, some of these coaches and consultants and service-based entrepreneurs leverage some of the things that we've trained on today to really simplify and streamline and systematize how they build out their content, their copy, their landing pages, uh, nurture sequences. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah, I think it's so exciting to see all of the things we can do. And something Amy and I have talked about is this abyss of opportunity. Like you will never hit the end of what AI can do for you. It can do everything. It can do things you can't dream of, and then it can do more. Tomorrow, there will be things that you never would have thought. And a big part of being able to implement it well is actually being able to like rein yourself in and be like, okay, this part is useful to me now, right? This is the piece. This is the lane I should stay in so that I can be productive with this because it's really cool to take a celebrity and turn them into a horse and then animate that. And <laughs> honestly, like, I don't need to know everything about AI. I want to get really good at how can I make it sound authentic? How can I reach somebody's ideal client? How can I identify the ideal client? That's enough for me. And it's a lot. That is a deep rabbit hole to go down. And I want to get really good with those things. I'm not really focusing on the beautiful artwork that people can create with AI, not because it's not interesting to me, but because it's not useful to me right now. Mm -hmm. So as much as we've covered here, not all of it is going to be useful and you don't need to learn all of it. But if there's something that, that David's covered where it's like, oh, I could use help with that, get it, get that help, use AI to go deep with that and, 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 invite the help to get the help that it's offering so that you can in improve your business in a way that works for you. Mm. Sage words to finish on. Um, I just, yeah, want to do, do a huge thank you to the both of you just inspiring and getting me so, sort of started on this journey and many other business owners and coaches as well. I know we shared a lot of uh, really valuable info today. I'll pop some links to your website. So if people want to find out a little bit more about what you're doing. And similarly, I'll pop some links through to Systemology as well. So with that, we'll call it a wrap. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.